screen. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. Uh, before, yeah, okay. So today we're going to be looking at uh, how to use AI to a screen see this. Um, so this is just an introduction that uh, we're going to go through. This is just uh, the same as what we had uh, yesterday. No, not the same, but similar to what we had yesterday. So this is just for the introduction. So let's start. Let me hide this one. Uh, okay. Yeah. So when we are looking for uh, defining or when we are lo looking for toward this uh, by the way my my audio is uh you can hear hear me right let me just make sure can you guys hear me clearly okay thank you okay so when we are talking about um, screening CVs or screening resumes for a specific position or specific uh, department, uh, the the things that we have to consider are uh, key screening criteria are job specific skills and qualifications, which we have already uh, specified under the job descriptions, relevant experience, educational background, and uh, certification and professional mem mem membership. So, what professional membership means? Some um, some departments or some fields of study actually have this professional mem mem membership that um, you have to be part of in order to be recognized as uh, professional. Um, yeah. So, for instance, you can take accounting. There is ACCA cert certification or membership actually, actually it's a membership uh and others yeah for uh even enjoying departments there are some professional mem membership and certifications that you have to get in order to qualify uh yeah so what i want to emphasize is the weighting the criteria so uh we have a lot of criteria right so for for instance, when we were creating a job description yesterday for the finance department, we have had a lot of criteria uh, that we specified under or on the job requirements or the job descriptions, right? So weighting this criteria is very, very important to show uh, to, or to tell the AI or the LLA uh, uh, which criteria to focus on. So, for instance, you could say that uh, experiences uh, for you, may, maybe experience is better than, uh, let's say, uh, educational background, right? So you could have a better or a much more weight, or you could, get a, you could give much more weight for the experience uh, when compared to the educational background. So we, we are going to see how we can do that in a in the practical session, which we are going to have right now. That I want you to keep in mind that weighting the criteria is uh, the big, a big instrument that you can use when using AI. So you cannot do this easily by manually when you are uh, trying to screen the CVs manually. It's not going to be easy to weigh the criteria, but with AI, it's very easy, and we're gonna see how. So, as we have been um, discussing earlier uh, or yesterday, the main thing with AI is the prompt, right? So, crafting an effective and a better prompt every time is going to uh, like ensure you that you're going to get a better result. So, developing uh, prompts, like you have to craft specific prompts for ChatGPT to analyze the CVs, we're going to be seeing uh, or looking at how we can do it. Some of, for instance, uh, an, an example prompt could, could be evaluate this CV for the position of uh, finance, focusing on skills such as budgeting, forecasting, budget for forecasting, and so on and so on. So this is just an example prompt. Uh, but the main thing that you have to understand is it's iterative. Attractive. So I, what I mean by attractive is, uh, so you give it a prompt, it's going to give you a, re a response and you're going to uh, lo look at the response and uh, do some adjustment to the prompt. 
and get a better result and and so on and so on till you get a result or a feedback or uh let's say a generated uh screening that's better or that's up to your standards yeah uh okay Yeah, okay. So the benefits and the limitations include, so the benefit obviously includes time saving, consistency, and reduces bias. So uh, for instance, uh, someone could have a lot of certifications, a lot of, a lot of let, let, let's say, an impressive resume in, in terms of uh, certifications and education and so on and so on, but do not have the right uh experience right so someone who has a zero year experience but have a master's degree could uh, might not perform as well as the the other candidate with a bsc degree or a ba degree with uh, a 10 years of experience right so uh since you're gonna be giving it weight to the ai is going to reduce the bias so you could be biased towards someone when you see some uh let's say uh qualifications but with ai it's not going to be biased easily so that's one of the benefits and the limitations may, might be it's it could be some nuance judgments and relies on quality of the input data and uh, the criteria definitions so if you do not give it a good prompts if you're gonna give it a good uh, data or a good input data it could give you a bad result so which is going to be very bad actually yeah so one of the way that you can integrate the result uh, with recruitment the recruitment uh, workflow is by automated short li listing which is manually creating a short list based on uh, what chat gpt or what the llm recommends you so we're going to be seeing how we can do this especially because on the report you're going to be only reporting for especially for the second part of the report you're going to be only reporting for the top two we're going to be seeing how uh, you're going to be using chat gpt's recommendation in order to create a short list and human oversight is you have you always almost always not almost you have to always review what uh, the ai recommends so as we have said ai is not perfect it's just okay i think there was a question yes bernard yes sorry i have to interject you as you are going on but i just wanted this clarity um you talk about um oh there was uh, uh, uh if the screen was wrong you were talking about the fact that uh you have to uh, manually do the is it shortlisting based on the recommendation from uh, AI or chat GPT? My question yes. is that, uh, yeah, manual I create a shortlist based on chat GPT recommendation. Okay, so my question is, for example, if you see the folder, you have about, let's say, 15, 20 or 50 um, CVs on a particular, a particular row. Now, as you mean that you have made the criteria, so you are supposed to shortlist. Are you going to review them manually or you can use uh, AI ChatGPT to be able to shortlist the CVs for you. Yeah. So what I mean by manually create a shortlist. Uh, so what we're going to do is with AI. So uh, so there are some AIs that are practically uh, like uh, crafted for the HR department, which are not free, uh, or the even the company itself, if if it is a big company, could could create. Uh, an AI or an LLM uh, just specifically for that department or for the HR department in order to help them with the job uh, description, creating the job description, creating the interviews, creating everything. Be, uh, and so they could be, so when using that kind of LLM, it's not li limited. So the input is not limited. So what I mean by uh, creating a short list is let's say now you give it five CVs and you ask it to grade it, right? And when it gives you back, let's say, uh, so you, you gave it five and it gave you a rank. So uh, based on the criteria you have said, uh, like like uh, John Doe is uh, number one 
and uh, Emily is number two, and Alicia is number three, and so on and so on and so on. So this is just a rank in ChatGPT's Ch Ch recommendation. So you're not going to take the whole thing or the whole if if after of course after you review the recommendations, if you feel that's not biased and it's correct, you're not gonna just take the whole people and call them for interviews, right? So you have to create the shortlist based on the rank. So you're gonna take the ChatGPT's recommendation of the rank and create a shortlist from there and call them for further, uh, let, let's say, uh, progress or for the interview or other processes that it, they have to, to, to go through. So that's what I mean by creating a shortlist. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah. uh, hello, sir. Uh, yes, hello, yes. please. Uh, I'm yet to I'm yet to really come to terms with what you just uh, explained. If you could uh, maybe go through it again with uh, an example to help. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna have an example session after like one one slide. So we only have one slide to go through. So after we go through that slide, we're gonna have a session, a practical session. So. I think it will everything up. Um, okay, I'm not seeing the screen. Is that clear? I don't know who asked. No. Um, okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So the best practices when coming to um, using AI in order to screen CVs is the first one is continuous improvement. So do regular updates on the criteria and the prompts uh, based on the hiring outcomes. Uh, transparency that, uh, so this is just for professional users, not for this one, but you have to ensure the candidates uh, are aware that AI is assisting in the screening process. So this is actually a recommendation in some of the countries. And ethical consideration uh, involves like uh, avoid bias in creation, uh, in criteria and to ensure fair evaluation. So uh, this is just the introduction part. Uh, so if you have any questions here, we can talk about it or we can move to the uh, practical session and we can see how we can do it there. So is it clear? Can I see th some th thumbs up? Okay, good, good, okay. So I think we can move to uh, doing it uh, together. So let, let me go to ChatGPT. It's verifying. Yeah, yeah. So let me get uh, like the prompts, or I'm sorry, the resumes that we have shared. Um, okay, let me find. Okay. So let me, uh, I think I have to download it again because. Okay, so yeah, whilst yeah, you are, um, wait, yeah, no, I okay. just wanted to clarify this. So, um, so, um Let's say, um, Let's say uh, with the job description that we created, you can um, develop the weighting or criteria based on the job description by feeding into the AI, right? No, uh, the job, the weighting is done by you, actually. Okay, so I have to, okay, no, I mean the criteria for, for weighing them or for the weighting. Of course. The criteria when we when we say waiting, we are not referring to what we have seen uh, so far. So the waiting is a different thing. We're gonna be seeing how we can wait it. But 
we have to use, of course, uh, so the first step, so we have already put it here. The first step is we provide uh, the job de descriptions since we have uh, generated the job description yesterday, we're gonna be using that one. We're gonna share the CVs and we're gonna be uh, focusing on key areas, right? So we're gonna be seeing these things. Um, but uh, so um, the waiting is done here. Like after we uh, share the job description, I'm gonna show you how we can uh, put the weight in there. So we haven't seen how to weight it. Is it clear? Or did I not answer you? It's clear, it's clear. Yes, yes. Um, there is some echo. Um, okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. Please write on the message if you can't speak because I didn't hear. So if you remember, this is just uh, the job description that we have created for the financial department, which is for the mid senior financial analysis position, right? So the first thing that we have to do is actually uh, give the LLM the resume, no, um, I mean the job description. So I just copied and pasted here. I think it's better actually uh, to do it in a dark file so that we can clearly see the uh, prompt or the weighting that we are going to be using. So I'm going to create a new dark file. Yeah. So here, let me just uh, paste it. So this is just your, let's say, um, your uh, job description, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to, to touch that. So the key responsibilities, the job summary is there. So the waiting comes here, right? Uh, let me, okay. Yeah, so uh, the qualifications here, I think it's not clear, okay. So let's say um, that we want the candidate to have uh, or we are looking for a candidate who has uh, experience over education, right? So under the qualification, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, under the qualification, uh, so here we have specified that bachelor's degree in finance, accounting, economics, and related field. So here we can just uh, in bracket, give it, let's say out of 10, uh, a four or a five out of 10. So, the weight for this specific qualification is five out of ten. So that's why I'm what this means. Um, so minimum of five experience, uh, five years of experience in financial analysis, budgeting, and forecasting. So we want to give this one a higher rating, which is nine out of ten, because we are lo looking for more experience to than uh, the educational part. Um, professional qualifications, let's say we want to get this one a mid-range, so 5.7, uh, 7.5 out of 10. Uh, we want uh, proven experience in financial so software such as SAP, Oracle, and QuickBooks. So we want to give this, let's say, uh, a 7 or a, an 8 out of 10. So we're just giving it weight, right? Uh, okay, let's give it a space here. So advanced proficiency in Microsoft Excel and other financial modeling tools. Let's give this one just six out of 10. And for the skills, uh, we can, uh, okay. We can give this one uh, a, a weight as well. So, but we can also leave it if they are not relevant, that much relevant. Strong analysis and problem solving, we can give it for instance, a two out of five. So this is just examples um, here. Excellent attention to detail. Let's give it a three out of five. 
uh, ability to work uh, independently. Let's give it a three out of five. Uh, skills, yeah. Let's give, just give them. Yes. Uh, uh, hello, hello. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, what uh, what uh, tells the overall that we are giving? What tells that it should be over ten or it should be over five? No, no, no. Uh, it's it doesn't ma matter actually. We can we can make this one out of ten actually. Like it's no it's not a matter of uh, out of ten or out of five. We can give it all. So we can just make this one six out of ten. Uh, so yeah, then we just so I can do I can make it out of twenty. Yes, but you just have to make sure that you give it the correct weight. For for instance, if you want, uh, like uh, uh like a high level of integrity and confidentiality to be higher than uh, let, let's say proficiency in financial reporting you have to make sure that the weight is higher so if you give this uh, let's say six out of ten you give this one let's say uh, five out of uh, that it's, this, this one is less than the, uh, the uh, higher level of integrity just try to maintain the weight is that okay. clear or we will yeah, go through yeah, the no, okay no it's clear it's clear for me okay good thank you uh yes is that a question yes kenny all right Jared, thank you i noticed that this particular candidate has not been awarded full mark so is it possible that we award a full mark for any of the categories oh uh, come again i'm sorry Can you hear me now? No, no, yeah, no, I can't, yeah. Okay, so I was saying that uh, this particular candidate have not been awarded full mark in any of the category. So is it possible that we allot full mark to any of the uh, points? Is it a possibility? Um, so, yeah, so uh here what we're trying to do is this is not for the candidate actually this is just the job de description so this is not related to okay. any of the candidates so the candidates are oh, going okay. to be weighted based on this weighting so if the candidate does not meet any of these qualifications he, he's going to be rejected or he's going to be uh ranked uh on the list or on the last part, the positions. Yes, uh, I think. Jonathan, uh, before that, did I answer your question, uh, Kenny? Okay, thank you. Uh, you, you. Jonathan, please. Okay, so uh, this waiting method is a, is a way to, is it a way to screen our candidates based on their qualifications and what they provided i mean it's it's our way of doing things or is it what i just want to yeah so the waiting is just to highlight uh, or to tell the llm which qualifications are much more relevant to the company than the others so uh so this is the job posting that we have created so this is already uh posted this is the job description that we have posted on the job board right so people saw this and thought that they are uh, a good candidate for this position and apply right so what we are trying to do here is just uh telling the llm actually which weights more than the other so let's say for, for instance let's say someone uh we have two candidates right so candidate a and candidate b so uh, let's say uh, both candidates have a mass, uh, one candidate has a bachelor's degree and the other candidate has a master's de degree in finance, right? So let's say um, candidate A who has a bachelor's degree has a 10 year experience in financial an analysis. 
and the candidate B who has a master's degree in uh, finance actually has no or has only two years of experience in finance analysis. So both are re relevant, right? Both are within, no, uh, le let's say candidate B actually is uh, has five years of experience just to qualify him into this window. So both candidates are relevant, right? Those candidates have the minimum requirements that we are looking for, but we are trying to uh, weight them. So we are trying to wait if we are lo looking for a master's candidate more than five years of, uh, uh, or uh, in relation to, or when co compared to a 10 years of experience, right? Because both have uh, the minimum requirement, we are trying to wait if you are lo looking for a person who has a 10 year experience, or a person who has a master's degree. So when dealing with this, we are just telling the LLM or the AI that we are more focused on the experience. For So for this exba example that I have just shared, the LLM is going to rank candidate A uh, above candidate B because candidate A has more experience than candidate B. And we are lo looking for experience over education, right? So if two candidates have uh, fulfilled the same or the minimum requirements that we are looking for, and we are we have to uh, go through dips or in depths into uh, who we want to hire. So this is going to help a lot. So that's why we are using the waiting method. Is that clear, Jonathan? Yeah, yeah. So we use this waiting method and uh, we just prompt you do, do, do like this to the AI. I mean, yes, maybe we, I join yes. late. So. Yeah, we will see how we're going to be writing the prompt. But for now, we're just writing the weights of the skills and the qualifications. Okay, okay. okay. I have one question. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, are we going to see uh, the same person who will be qualified for this, uh, for example, for the financial operations management at the end of this uh, challenge, at the end of the week, or th th they might be different according to the way how we are going to give the weight for each uh, qualifications and other uh, criteria. Thank you. Um, okay, yeah. So as I've said, the weight is going to tell the LLM which qualifications we are looking more or what we desire. So that's uh, why we are using the weighting method. Of course, you can avoid the weighting method and just give it to the LLM and they will still give, give us rank and it's going to uh, screen them. But if you want to uh, have a good screening method, what I would recommend is uh, giving it weight. So uh, for your question, if I get your uh, question right, uh, so and, uh, at the end of the week or at, uh, at the end of uh, task three, you have to uh, come up with a short list of candidates or a rank or the top candidates that, uh, that qualify from the five we have se selected. So we have specified- Yeah, I know, I know, uh, yeah, thank you, I know that. But are you looking for the same person from all of us, uh, which will be- No, 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 yeah. no, because you're, you're gonna be, you are going to be selecting the resumes at random, right? You are going to be selecting the uh, resumes at random. We have, for each department, we have above a hundred resumes. So uh, we don't think that everyone is going to select the same five resumes because it's random. So we're not lo looking for the same candidates. We're, and even if you have the same, you choose the, f the same five candidates, you might not come up with the same result because the prompts that you are going to be using are very different. So yeah, okay. Uh, yes, Adisana. Yeah, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for your presentation. Uh, sorry, I I was late to the class. Uh, and I had you talking about LLM as a method. Is, is LLM a, a, a tool? Uh, is it part of the tool we'll be using for the screening, uh, CV screening? Or I want, I want clarification on that, please. 
Um, so the question is, are you going to be using LLM for the screening, right? Yes, I, I, the question is, what is LLM? Is it true that we'll be using for the screening as well? So I, I want you to just as uh, Ms. West touches on it. Yeah, so which LLM you're going to be using for this training is not limited. But since I, I think uh, since ChatGPT is available everywhere and it's a good uh, it's a good LLM compared to the free ones that we can get our hands on, uh, we're going to be using ChatGPT more often. But for the trainees, you are not limited to using uh, just one uh, just one LLM. And if I'm not mistaken, we're going to actually have an Olympics of LLM where we're going to be having uh, groups and we're going to be competing uh, by using LLM. So it's going to be fun and you're going to be having to work with different LLMs. Collins, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, you're going to be working with um, different LLMs and you're going to be looking at their outcomes and how they differ. So even if you give them the same prompt, it's they are going to be giving you a different response and so on and so on. But to answer your question, you are not limited to using any uh, one LLM. But for the sessions, since ChatGPT is available for everyone, we're going to be using ChatGPT intensively. Uh, but I want to assure you that even if you choose not to use the LLMs, you are uh, very welcome. You can do them manually. Uh, so this is true for uh, creating the job descriptions, creating the interviews, creating the, or screening the resumes and so on. So if you feel comfortable by, uh, by using uh, or by doing these tasks manually, you can do it, but I believe uh, no, uh, one of the target of this training is to create or to make you co comfortable with using AI. So I would advise you just an advice uh, you to be comfortable with using them. But you are not limited to just one. You can experiment with many. And we also have an Olympics event where we're going to be using di different LLMs to just compete with each other and see the, their outcomes. So um yeah not nothing is there limited. so did i answer your question uh, 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 hello sir hello yes 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 uh, i think it's uh, just to help him for what he's asking uh, llm is large language models oh. it's i mean i guess that's what you are asking so whether it's chat gpt cloud ai they all fall okay. under llm so I oh. guess that's what he was trying to know, the acronym for uh, LLM. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I think I was off track there. But yeah, so LLMs are just large language models, which are the same. We actually, okay, I think I have to use, stop you using LLMs interchangeably with AI because everyone is in the, like comfortable with the term AI. But uh, LLMs and AI, AI actually is much, much wider or broader than uh, LLMs. That's why I was trying to use the term LLM. But yeah, LLMs, AI, generative AI, uh, gen AIs, you can uh, call them interchangeably, but they are the same thing. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So did I answer? Okay, good. Uh, so I think uh, there was another question, or is that it? Uh, any questions? Okay. So let's move uh, to back to our work. So here we just given it the uh, weights. So the carry path. Here it's specified and everything is the compensation and compensation and the benefits are specified. So we weighted the skills, competencies and the qualifications, right? So let's write the prompt. So let's say this.
Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's this is enough. So I want you to go through the job description provided below and help me with screening a list of candidates CV. I have weighted the qualification and skill and competencies in brackets like this. Yeah. Let's just so yeah, this is just my first um, prompt that I'm going to be using. So we have provided the resume with the weights. So let's just copy this one, copy it and paste it here. No, sorry, yeah, paste it here. And uh, the good thing about um, ChatGPT is we can actually upload the CVs di directly, so we can upload it from the computer. I think, uh, where is it? Uh, documents, download CV, okay. So let me go to the downloads, uh, let me go to CVs. I have too many files. Oh uh, yeah, CV. And here, um, since it's for the finance department, I'm gonna go to the finance department and uh, select the ones that I want. So let's select the just four and open them. So it's going to load them if you can see. So it wasn't uploading the one of it, but it has uploaded three. Yeah, so let's just uh, click in there. So I don't think it's... Uh... Again, it's a weighted qualification and here are the details of analysis. So these are just the weights and the detail of the analysis that it's going to be using. So here it's calling it, so here you have the file name here, if you can see it, it has the file name. So here it's going to analyze if uh, there's a degree in BA uh, or a degree in business, yes, in taxation, uh, experience over 12 years, so nine out of 10, uh, professional certifications, uh, seven out of 10, and so on and so on, candidate three, here it's the same thing and here we have the summary of evaluation so here it's going to give give it out of 120 so for the qualifications uh, it has 5 out of 10 for the degree 10 out of 10 for the experience 7.5 uh, out of 10 for the certification and so on and so on so it has total of 36.5 out of 50 and uh, it has already calculated for the uh let's say uh, the skills and competencies and gave, gave it this total weight here also we have see we can see the total weight and here we can see the total weight so uh so obviously candidate one is be better than candidate two and we was better than yeah. candidate three so recommendation is going to give you a recommendation so this is what we mean by recommendation the ai recommendation so based on the analysis candidate one and candidate two are the most suitable for this po po position and so this is your going to be your shortlist so it's going to tell you why it doesn't think 
candidate three is a good candidate. So it ha he has less experience in LAX professional certification, which make them uh, less suitable for that role. Yeah. So this is just an example of how you can do it. So is that clear, guys? Or shall we go through it again? Uh, okay, sir. So, uh, 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 okay, meanwhile, let me ask uh, a question. Uh, okay. Sir, so, uh, I want uh, now we have uh, done uh, the weighing for we, we wait for qualification and for skills. So, but uh, that means we can weigh, including the responsibility, we can go beyond that. Yes, can we can weigh maybe based on responsibility. And but, but how do you weigh the responsibility? Because the responsibility is what they are going to be working if they are hired, right? Yes, I okay. I was just thinking sometimes people now apply, you know, in their CV based on the responsibilities they have seen in the job uh, publication. So yes. I was thinking, could that also be because those the elements can also be found uh, in their in their CV when they are applying? I'm, I'm just asking, or oh, we are limited yes, to those two as a standard. No, 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 no you are not limited for just these two. You can also wait this. We can actually redo the whole thing by waiting by including uh, the wait for the key responsibilities as well. So, sorry, I, I think um, yeah, we, we can we can talk about experience in this regard. Uh, yeah, experience in the past. Can we weigh the experience? Uh, yeah, we have weighted the experience. Uh, I think we can see it here. Okay. Yeah, see here we have you you can see the experience. So a minimum of five years okay. experience in these positions. We have given it a weight of nine out of ten. So, uh, what was the question? Hello. Uh, the, 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 you, know, you know, it was talking about the responsibility. You know, the I, oh. I think responsibility is what they are expected to do when they get to yes. the job. When they get yes. the job, and yes. uh, there's no way we can get their performance when they have not already delivered the performance. Yes. Then I was now thinking about that maybe we can weigh the past. Uh, uh, performances by the experience, by exactly. weighing the experience, and you said you have already weighed the experience in the in this one. So yes. what 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 what's a good job? Well, I think uh, can we can we can we do it all over again so that we can? Uh, yes, of course, it? of course we can, we can. Yeah. So one way. So uh, yeah, so maybe uh, yeah. Regarding the responsibility, actually, this process uh, will be after the submission of this uh, job description then after this we will have i think the interview session so during the interview session mm -hmm. these responsibility issues may be raised during that time i think uh um so uh i don't think the interview is going to be before um uh, the screening so because you have more than a uh, hundred sometimes a thousand uh CVs that are going to be uh, sent to you or a thousand applicants for let's say two open positions or two vacancies it's going it's not going to be efficient to just call everyone and uh, give them interviews right so you're going to be uh, having a short list you you're going to be screening the inter the candidates based on their CVs and Call yeah, this is what I'm saying. Sorry, yeah, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, because the interview will be after the screening, right? Yes, yes. So in yeah. this case, the responsibility issue may be considered during that time. Yeah, but one way we can do actually we can uh, do uh, with these key responsibilities is we can wait it and we can uh, tell the LLM to analyze the key responsibilities based on their past experience. So if they have a experience and experience with developing uh, financial planning and budgeting process is going to go through the experience that, that that they have previously and it's going to map them to the key responsibility so that's going to be that could be one way uh, but yeah just as Tarefa said uh, this uh, no, normally the key responsibilities are covered in the interview after the screening yeah so th thank you uh, 
So did we answer your question? Uh, yes, I you, you did. I, and I, I was asking if we can go, go through it again. Yeah, I will, I will, I will. Uh, I, will I was just uh, trying to answer everyone and uh, we will do it again. Yes, Bernard, please go. Uh, Bernard, please, uh, you can speak. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can, yeah. Okay, so, I'm um, sorry. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, um, um, I think uh, Collins asked about the waiting. I think um, I agree with him because we need to make it more scientific. Uh, so, I was thinking that um, this is assuming that we have a weighted um, average of 100%. Uh, wouldn't it be okay to assign each uh, thematic um, uh, yeah. area or criteria we are looking yeah. out for? Let's say when it comes to a qualification, let's say we assume you are giving 20%, when it comes to um, um, background and other things, so that it all forms up to 100%, then it can have yeah. a scientific basis for creating uh, that, that particular CV. Then, um, so if we distribute it in that way, then when it comes to the minor, uh things that we are looking at for criteria uh, um, 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 attribute that we are looking for under each major team then we share let's say if it is 10 or 20 percent then we share it among them because i see that okay so you want to go into you ignore for example the major team and then you put in max it will not make it more scientific enough so um but if you're able to um assign each thematic area let's say 10 20 percent to make let's say each hundred percent I think that one will make more uh, um, uh, um, science-based judgment. Yes, um, thank you so much for saying that. So uh, I, I do be believe that it's better. This just to show you an example, uh, but yeah, that's going to be better. So it's better to, for, for instance, let's assume that the candidates are going to be weighted out of 100, right? So for qualifications, we could give it out of 20 or 30, and we can actually uh, distribute this 30 amongst the qualifications that we have here. And for the skills, we can give, give it out of the 20 about, uh, out of 100, and we can distribute the 20 uh, here. So yeah, that's definitely a better way to do it and i would recommend you to actually uh, do that you have to sit and uh, come up with a good uh, um, calculation on uh, how to weigh things and which to give uh, uh, which way to give to which competency and which uh, skill and qualification and so on and so on but i think that's way better yeah so thank you bernard and we will try to do it again um so any other questions guys before we move to uh doing it again okay uh, I, I have one agreement what about the rest now uh, okay i'm going to take that as a yes yeah so let's get back to the drawing boards and uh start all over again so um Let's say so for this one, we give it, let's say, uh, 50 out of 100, right? So, so here, 50 marks. We can actually say, uh, we can actually specify the marks here. Um, so here we can say, for educational background, we can say uh, 50 marks. Um, here we can say 20 marks. Here we can actually say uh, professional certifications. I'm sorry, I think there's some noise. Is it uh, is it disturbing you guys? or is it clear is my my voice clear i think there is some background noise okay it's clear okay good good okay so for this one let's say uh 
again, uh, let's say 15 marks. How are we going? I think we are already filled. Okay, um, let's say this one's 10 marks, and this one is also 10 marks, and this one is uh, 15 marks. So we have 20, 35, we have 15 left. So here we can say uh, 10 marks, and we can say here, uh, uh, let's say, so five marks, right? Yeah, 15, yeah, five marks. And we can do the same things here. Um, so here, let's say it's going to have uh, 30 marks. And out of the 30 marks, we can specify actually uh, uh, for this one, let's say since we have five, let's just give them even. Or we can just give this one 10 marks. Um, and here, let's say four marks, 14, uh, six marks, and here five marks each. Yeah, so 10, 20, 30, yeah. And oh, we have actually. Okay, uh, okay let's, let's leave this one at five. Let's make this one a six. There's no turning back if we start. So, like uh, two marks, and here as well, um, two marks. Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay. And for the responsibilities, uh, let's just give it a whole 20 marks. Just to see how it's going to react. So it's just a trial. So, yeah. So uh, I have waited the qualification, the skills, competencies, uh, the qualifications. Let's use a comma here and here again uh, where is where am i where is home? so here is end and here is responsibilities in a bracket like um, uh, five marks yeah Okay, here I think qualification. Yeah, so let's use this one. And let's leave this one. So uh, I'm going to select all and copy it and go to chat GPT. I'm going to create a, open a new uh, a new tab. So here we are just restarting. So here I'm going to paste uh, what I've written in the doc file. And here I'm gonna add, oh, I have been restricted. So the thing about uh, free, the thing about free uh, chat GPT is you are limited by token size. So for now I am actually uh, restricted uh, from using or uploading files because I have already uploaded uh, the maximum number of files. But one thing that we can do is so this is good that it came up right now so here now let's say below i have yeah i have uh, below our test series the series uh, you are going to be screening Yeah, so here I can just copy and paste the CVs here. So uh, let me just, um, I don't think you can see my screen here. Uh, this is not a good CV. Let's see another one. Yeah, so.
So I have this CV. Uh, so candidate one. Think candidate candidate one. So here is the candidate one and wait, 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 wait. I think I didn't copy it correctly. Yeah. And candidate two is going to be. Uh, I just I, I know you you cannot see my screen, but I'm just copying and pasting the CVs that we have provided. So there is no confusion there. Yeah, so this is for candidate two and for candidate three, we have, it's going to be our third. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, so we have our three candidates. So let's see the waiting. But I will show you how to upload with another account that's not uh, restricted. So yeah. So you can see here for candidate one out of 50 marks, uh, it has, he has or she has a bachelor's in accounting, which is a 10 mark. He has over five years of experience, which is 50 marks, but he doesn't have any professional qual qualification. So he gets zero. Um, experience in financial so software, uh, but not it's not specific. So five marks, proficient in Microsoft Office and Excel five marks. So that's going to be thirty-five out of fifty marks. And for candidate, so he has uh, no uh, still for candidate one out of the thirty marks, uh, he has 20, twenty-nine marks. And for the key responsibilities, so here investment involvement in financial planning and budgets and responsibilities so it goes through his past work experience and it's going to look if he has a relevant work experience in that responsibility and if he does it's going to give him a mark so he gave him five but he gave here it doesn't since he the, uh, the cv doesn't specify a board report preparation it gives it zero and if he doesn't mention uh, participation in cross uh, departmental projects gives him zero. But of course, it's not. It's not. Again, uh, I'm gonna highlight this. It's not actually recommended to uh, give way to the key same responsibilities because these are actually what he's going to be doing in the future. So it's better to discuss them in the uh, interview. But yeah, so total out of 100, he has 82 for candidate two, he has uh, 92, uh, candidate three has 68. So here candidate two is better. Uh, so yeah, here you have the recommendation from AI. Yeah, so is that clear, uh, Bernard? Yes. Yes, thank you. So um, I just wanted to make a suggestion, um, yes. if it's possible. So I was wondering that if it's possible that um, the team could help us with maybe a list of uh, recommended AIs that we can use um, uh, even at the end of the program, if that can be done, um, particularly maybe the ones that, are, that don't have premium um, access or accounts that are absolutely free. And then also, if it is possible that going into the future as part of the training the program, um, um, a subscription could be made and then uh, those who complete uh, will be given access to maybe selected premium um, um, AI tools. So basically it can be from let's say a month or maybe a quarter so that um, you can use to build your app and then be able to, to flow in it. So that's something that I wanted to suggest yeah, to, to, to you and the team, if it could be incorporated yes. into the training. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. And I will make sure to pass it along with the team and we will have a discussion on that one. Uh, but on uh, giving you a list of uh, AIs that you can use that are free, 
I'm sorry to this, but uh, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, all the good AIs that are available are not free, unfortunately. Cloud is not completely completely free. Of course, we have cloud. Uh, Opening AI is not completely free. Uh, of course, we have Bard, which is completely free, but it's not as good as uh, ChatGPT and cloud. Uh, so uh, the best AIs that you can find on the web are uh, ChatGPT and Cloud and Bose. Of course, they have their free tier, which you can use for free. But the some of for for instance for ChatGPT, you cannot upload the more than I think uh, I think it was sixty five thousand tokens. So it's really limited by the token size, which is true also for uh, Cloud and a, any other AI. So uh so every good ai are not free unfortunately and uh the others are not easily easy to access so i don't know if you follow the ai news but meta has been de developing their own uh, uh like llm called llama which is better than uh which is be better than gpt in some ways in cloud in some ways but that is not going to be available online or on the web like this so uh, you cannot run it easily so uh, that's why we are sticking with chat gpt uh, but uh, i would like to remind you that we are going to be having a ai or a generative ai olympics where everyone is going to be working with different ai tools in order to just compete with each other uh, to bring a better uh to bring a better prompt or to to, to bring a better re results by using the ai so definitely you're going to be uh where at the end of the training you're going to be uh using or being able to use uh many of the ais that are good and available online and but, but for the su suggestion i will make sure to pass it on to the team okay thank you Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions? I think there were a lot of hands raised. Any questions, guys? Uh, please kindly come again with uh, downloading those uh, CVs to the. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I will. I will. Uh, but I don't think. Uh, yeah, give me one second. But. Uh, if there is any other questions, please uh, please ask. In the meantime, I think I have to switch accounts for using my other account. Or 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 if anything, if there is anyone who is willing to share their screen, uh, we can do it together with their accounts. And yes. Uh, Understand me? Hello? Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I, I just a moment. Thank you for the presentation. And I was about asking about the summary. This uh, the, the summary at the end of the screen. Is it somebody that will be working with and uh, up, uh, sending over for the our uh, our tax the tax theory uh -huh. of the tax yeah so the whole analysis is so i think you are were talking about the, this one yeah the summary at the end of the screen the, the summary of the candidates the three candidates the one that comes first second and third the summary yes the, this one yes. is it yes. the one that will be sending over for our assignment um, so you're not limited to just sending this one, uh, but I would recommend uh, for your report, I would recommend you to include the weighting that you have used and just a highlight of the analysis for just the top two candidates. So if it, it's not bad if you um, uh, create a table for each department and in that table you put the name of the candidates there and you write the analysis for each of them. So. In a table, you could uh, for candidate three under qualification, it, he has a bachelor's degree, which is ten marks, and so on and so on and so on. Right. So 
so for the of course just giving us this summary is not going to be it's, it's not going to uh, give us the whole image because we don't know what kind of scoring that you have used uh, which weight is used on which criteria or on which uh, qual qualification so only sharing the summary is not going to be sufficient for now so i would include i would encourage you to include uh, the weighting that you have used and the analysis that uh, is the result of the uh, uh, screening process um is that clear or okay good any questions guys i'm still uh Please just share the screen uh, course material, CV screening course material. Host what? The course material, the, the, the PowerPoint, the PPT. So here, this one? Yes. Yeah, I will, I will. I will share it right now. Thank you. But let me just try and uh, take you through how you can actually uh, upload the file into ChatGPT. So I think I can use this account. No, it's taking longer. Yeah. So here I'm going to just uh, click on this one. And when I, it asks me if you have uh, the file on a G drive, you can just uh, go to the G drive, the Google drive and find it there. But since I have mine on my computer, I'm going to click on my computer and go to the place. So here, since I'm using a Linux uh, operating system, which is Ubuntu, it might seem a bit di different, but the process is the, the same if you are using Windows or MacOS and so on. So yeah, I'm just going to find the folder with where i keep my cvs go to the specific folder self folder and click uh, se select just the number of uh, cvs that i want to upload so here i selected five and i'm going to open it and it's going to load it here you can do the analysis again let me copy it and uh i think uh, i think here it is yeah it's finished so here i'm going to paste it yeah so again you might not be just able... i can't see what you're presenting you can't see uh is it for everyone guys i don't know if it's just me yeah yeah let's check so is it for everyone should i change my name no I, I, i'm seeing it, it from here now. i'm seeing it from here yeah right. i think it's your method yeah so shall i go through it again and uh, maybe maybe if you haven't seen please yes please okay of course of course of course so what i did was just um uh, so let me just copy okay i have already it uh so let me just create a new chat and here uh yeah here you can see this button right So I'm going to click on it, upload for, from my computer, and go to the place or the, the, the folder that I have uh, it stored in. So I have it in a folder called CV. I'm going to go to the specific subfolder and select just the CV that I want. So th th this is just an example for uh, this part. So after you have selected the five uh, CVs at random, I would uh, advise you to copy and paste them into a different folder. That way you are not going to be com confused. But yeah, I have selected my CVs and I'm going to click on open. But uh, as I have said, this is a Linux operating system. So it might look a bit, a bit different on Windows, but it's the same process. So just select them and click on open. 
uh, it's going to upload them so you can see it here uploading the files um yeah and here you can just paste the prompt that we have written uh, on the doc file the google docs and just press enter and it's going to do the analysis for us I'm sorry, by yep. prompt, do you mean the job descriptions, please? Uh, yes, the job description plus we have added uh, some prompts uh, earlier. I don't know if you were, uh, if you saw it. Yeah. So we have oh, okay. added a prompt and we have actually added a weight here. So for the case responsibilities, we have added a 20 mark weight. For the qualification, we have added a 50 mark weight and we have di distributed the 50 mark to every qualification, the skills, and so on, yeah. So that's what I mean by prompt. It's a job description plus the prompt that is uh, additional to the job description. Yeah, so it's, uh, it actually created a table, I think, yeah. So here is a summary. So you can share this, uh, actually, this summary because it's a good summary. Uh, here you have the candidate summary. So let's expand it and take a look at it. So yeah, for every candidate, we have the summary here. Uh, here's a summary for their CV. Uh, so here's a detailed analysis. So 46 out of 100 and so on and so on. Yeah, so it's a good analysis actually. Uh, it might be because I'm using the uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using the premium account, but uh, yeah, the analysis is pre pretty much the same. I, I think we have seen with the free account earlier. So is that clear, guys? Hello? Okay, Colin, yes, thank you. Yes, yes, very clear, thank you. Okay. So any confusions, anything that, yes, Miri? Okay, okay. So for the prompts, I kind of missed the class because network issues and all. For the prompts, is there specific guidelines to follow when, when it comes to the specific marks you want to assign to for each, um, um, each qualifications on the job descriptions? Or is it just something we can come up with ourselves? Uh, yeah, so you can come up with it by yourself. Just uh, just have a clear expectation on uh, on your mind, and just create the uh, appropriate weighting for each qualification. So, uh, for our example, for our case, we were uh, talking about how, uh, like, if you are looking for a more experienced person more than their education. So uh, we gave uh, 15 marks for experience, as you can see here, and we gave 10 marks for education part. And we gave 10 marks again for the certifications, experience, again, 10 marks and so on and so on. And for the skills and competencies, the same thing. So the weight actually depends on what uh, the HR department or what the operations, depart uh, the operations manager, which is you, are uh, looking for in a candidate. So make sure to have a clear uh, like image of the candidate that you want. And uh, since this just uh, practice, just practice with it and uh, yeah, feel co comfortable with it. So it's not specified in the talent document. Again, I would like to remind you that this, uh, including the weight, is not uh, mandatory or it's not a must but it's a better thing to do. So as you can see for when we go back to the analysis, it gives us a clear analysis, a clear and a detailed analysis uh, than what we would have gotten if we weren't using the weighting process. So it gave us, so here it gives it a zero uh, mark and it also tells us why it gave it a zero mark. So. Uh, it's she didn't specify uh, yes or no, so th there are no pre pre uh, professional certifications and so on and so on. And it's we have we we are going to have a clear understanding 
about why a specific candidate is uh, ranked lower than the other. So here, uh, if you if you feel that uh, candidate three, which is the financial analysis, should have been uh, ranked higher, you can just go ahead and take a look at uh, his analysis, which is, uh, I believe, uh, here. And you can actually uh, get a, a clear image of why, right? So giving it a weight is a better thing to do. And I want you to, I, I wanted you to know that you can give it weight if you have a, if you don't know already. So that's why I included it in the session, but it's not a nice thing to do, but it's a recommended thing to do. So yeah, but the weights are not uh, already specified in the training document. So you have to come up with the weight. Is that clear, Midi? Yes, yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, good. So, any other questions? Actually, I do have one more question. So, after we get the whole max, then is it after of that course, for them to drafting, um, drafting the um, the interview questions? Hello. Uh, excuse me. Yes, yes. Uh, can you come again? I said, is it after we finish this whole analysis, uh, after we finish analyzing the CVs and getting the um, the most, um, the better candidates yes. for each position, is it after then we then go mm -hmm. ahead to draft the, um, the interview questions? Um, so, the interview questions uh, for this project are solely dependent on the qualifications and uh, the key competencies that you have specified in the challenge. Do uh, I'm sorry, in the job des description, right? So that's why they are taskable. So you have to review the job description, identify the key com competencies there. Uh, you you can use this these prompts and then generate the interview question. So. What this means is uh, the interview question is not dependent on the inter the screening. So it, they can go uh, side by side parallelly because the interview question is depending on the, uh, let's say, on the job de description solely, right? But in real life, uh, it's actually advised to uh, have or create the interview questions after the screening uh, process but for this project you can just go ahead and uh, create the interview questions side by side with the uh, screening method screening yeah yes thank you i uh, i should want to ask concerning the allocation of uh, marks to the to the job description uh what i wanted to ask is uh, are, we, are we all the marks are we working uh, uh, with a uh with a percentage maybe for instance everything must be within 100 percent or we just give uh, the marks uh arbitrarily to all all the all the all the rules and the, just uh, anyhow Okay, uh, I think uh, the question is about the um, the weighting, right? Yeah, the weighting. Uh, then yeah. uh, how much mark goes to what, and uh, the, uh, is it go is it going to be totaling towards hundred percent? Everything must be within hundred percent. The total marks, or is does not matter. Maybe if you give fifty marks to, for instance, to to qualifications. Then the experience, uh, let's assume 20 marks. And uh, at the end of the day, all the marks we allotted are like 150 to, uh, at the total. That does that make any meaning, or it shouldn't be, it should, it should be within a confine of 100%. I say, oh, awesome. that's what I'm asking. Yes, yes. And that's a great question. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you asked it. So, uh, 
you are not limited to any of the things that you have said. So you can do one or the other anyway, because the LLMs are actually very smart and they can understand what you are trying to do. So uh, that's why earlier I tried uh, to use or to do it by using the other method by uh, just cal calculating it out of 10 and 20 and 5 and so on and so on. And here we try to just uh, imagine that the whole uh, job description is out of 100 and we give or we distributed the 100 to the key responsibilities. We gave it 20 for the qualification, we gave it 30 and for uh, the, the, the rest, which is skill and competencies, we gave it a 30 and we distributed these marks evenly or as we liked, uh, as we preferred uh, to each uh, point, right? And here it's actually uh, going to be distributed evenly. And here it's going to be distributed by what we have already gave it. So uh, what I would recommend, so th this is again a recommendation that you can do it uh, either way, but I believe that this is uh, a better way because it has a good structure and it's going to assume that uh, or it's going to come up with a hundred uh, a ranking or a, like an, an analysis that's going to be weighted out of a hundred, which is a good uh, ground to analyze or to uh, compare candidates. But uh, if you have seen the earlier example, we actually weighted them out of 120, which you can do. But again, uh, this is just a recommendation. I, I believe th this is the better way to do it. But you are not li limited again. I would like to emphasize on that. So what I would recommend you to do is just experiment with uh, the same series by using di different weighting methods and come up with or see how they change and uh, see how different they are. So uh, does that make sense? Are this on me? Uh, are this on me, you're on yes, mute. Please. Yes, please. yes, yes. I, okay. I've gotten that. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Collins? Oh, okay, okay. Thank you uh, once again, sir. I, bet, I just want to ask uh, this like uh, on that CV, which is the better practice to use if, uh, let's say, I'm writing the name of each uh, candidate? That means I'm saving it that way. I want it to show me instead of listing of candidate one, candidate two in case uh, because uh, i mean after uh, screening the people may need to be called how how can i make it the summary uh, result come out in a way that if I, I can easily know the particular candidates you know because i mean like after the uh, screening so they are going to be called maybe through the number or whatever so i'm feeling if i'm using candidate one candidate two maybe it will be a bit difficult you know, for me to pick those particular uh, candidates. I don't know if you understand what I'm asking. So if yeah. it's safe yes. based on their name, is it better? So if I download it to uh, charge to be giving me based on their name, let's say Thompson, and then the next candidate, which is better? That's what I'm asking. Okay. So if, if you have the name of the candidates, it would be better if you give, give them the names. So if I, I don't know if you go if I, if you have gone through the service that we have provided uh, due to some I believe um, privacy concerns uh, we didn't if, uh, actually include actual names because uh, yeah but uh, if you have so in re real life if you give L the LLM uh, a name for each candidate it's going to call them by their name so since we haven't provided the name it's going to just call them candidate one candidate two candidate three but if you give them the names we can actually try this one if you like uh if you I, if i just give them names uh, from this training uh, from that li list of trainings that we have here when it does the analysis it's going to uh, just mention their names not their uh 
folder file ID or kind of by calling them the candidate one, candidate two, candidate three. So since we haven't provided the names, it's using the uh, just the file name or the uh, just calling them candidate one, candidate two, candidate three. But the advised one is what you just said. So uh, that it would it's uh, advised in real life since you have the real names of the the parties or the candidates that you use uh, the name of the candidate there and the llm if you give it the name it will uh, it, it will return the name also so does that make sense or so that, that makes sense that means if i have up to hundreds evs i have to <laughs> give their names when i'm saving them saving those service no, no, but 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 if you have a hundred candidates, uh, their CVs is going to include their names also, right? Yes. So you don't have to give them. Uh, you don't have to give the to give the LLM their names. It's already found in the file. But the files that we have provided doesn't have names, so that's why. Okay, it's, okay, 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 yeah, okay. Now I got yeah. it. Now I got yeah. it. There's no name. Okay, okay. Yes. So it's already there for real CVs, but here, since these are just made up CVs by LLMs, we didn't give them names. That, that's why it's just giving us uh, file names. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Mide? Okay, so now I just want to ask that. So we is this it means that we have to do this this whole process of uploading each cvs for each of the job um descriptions for each of the job rules right one that's the first questions a uh, first question rather and then the second question is is there a minimum or maximum of cvs we can upload to chat gpt to analyze the first one is um do we have to do it this individually like for the finance rule now would upload a set of CVs for that, matching it with the job descriptions to analyze. And then for the IT rules too, for each of the IT rules, the positions in the IT rules would also do that individually like that. We can't like mix it up or something. And then what's, is there a minimum or maximum amount of CVs that can be uploaded into chat GPT, the free version for it to work or for it oh. not to work? Yeah, okay, that's actually a good question. Uh, so for the first question, yes, you have to do it individually because if you mix it up, it could create uh, more miss than good. So I would advise you to just, uh, so it's, you're going to do this only four times because we have four departments. So just uh, write a prompt for the IT department and uh, give that to the LLM along with the CVs from the IT department. And again, for the finance, the same thing, uh, for the public relations, the same thing and so on. So for the first question, definitely yes, uh, do or uh, do them individually. And for the second question, uh, so I, as I've said, it's more or less, uh, more or less depend on the number of token or the token size uh, the token means just uh, on uh, like it's it has another meaning but in short it means the number of words so it counts the number of wo wo words and if it is exceeding the number of uh, words that we have been given it will not accept anymore but but you can actually uh, so the minimum or the, no, 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 not the minimum, the maximum number of CVs that you can upload to ChatGPT's free version is actually three. So you can only upload three, but, but you can upload the three and you can uh, include the two in the writing. Like you can just copy and paste the two as we have did uh, earlier you can just copy and paste the two into the prompt. So you can just tell it, I have uploaded the three uh, CVs in PDF file and uh, there is the two I have, I will be uh, writing them below and you can just copy and paste their uh, file number and um, let's say uh, 
their file number and their CV. So just copy and paste it. So that way you can just work with the whole file instead of the three. But in uploading sense, you can only upload up to three files. Okay, thank you once again. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, is there any question on the actual comments? Okay, yeah, yeah, Tarifa, we will uh, definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, okay, so are there any questions? Or is it clear? Can I see some thumbs up if everything is clear and we can end the session here? Okay, I'm okay. going to take that as a yes. Yes, uh, Addison, okay. Was that a mistake? Okay, good. So let me just stop the recording.